it starts somewhere in the 1980s where the first QMD and BUU codes uh, were created. And you can see that there is a long chain of codes and Smash is inheriting a lot of ideas from your QMD, from GBU, and we were also looking at GEM. Um, but inheriting ideas, uh, well, doesn't mean we copied the code, so we wrote everything from scratch. And in all this historical chain, Smash is the first C++ code. Everything else was written in Fortran. And many of the codes are, are used right now as well, like AMD, IQMD, URQMD, PHSD, GBU, GEM are actively used. They're all Fortran codes. Smash is the only C++ code, which I guess was the reason why Smash entered Jetscape. Other codes are not worse than Smash in any respect. Uh, they have a lot of nice physics features, sometimes the ones that Smash doesn't have, uh, but they are not C++ codes. And what's nice about Smash, it's under Git version control from the very beginning, so for any kind of bug that you find, you can always go back and find out how it was introduced, what was happening with it, and what papers were published with this bug. Okay, now let's... One, one question. Um, mm -hmm. From Lauren Casper, uh, can you define stochastic rates? Stochastic rates, let's go back. So here, stochastic rates means that to collide two particles, you are creating some kind of cell. Then you are choosing two random particles in the cell. And then you are saying these two particles are going to collide with some probability. You calculate the probability, you throw a dice. Mm. And if, it, if, it's, uh, if it's matching this probability, then you have a collision. Otherwise, you don't. So stochastic rates is the way to treat collisions. Is that sufficient? Yeah, uh, I don't see Lauren asking another follow-up, but she does, I'll let you know. Um, one question on the next slide, you also mentioned that uh, Smash was not superior. I guess maybe you're being humble, but I thought one of the main reasons to develop it was to have a uh, relativistically invariant code, right? That was properly boost invariant and everything. And I thought that the old codes did not do this. Uh, I would say, well, in HSD, um, at least you have an option. I don't know, HSD is not an open source code, but at least in HSD, you have an option to have stochastic rates. So in this respect, Smash is not superior. Uh, and in general, Smash right now has geometrical criterion. So it is not better in any way than, let's say, your QMD, GBU, AMD, GEM, uh, in terms of Lorentz invariance. Uh, the stochastic rates are implemented in Smash just right now. There is Jan Staudenmeier who is working on that, and he is uh, already successful. Like He has already implemented 3 to 1 collisions, and 3 to 2 collisions is just on separate branch. It's not on, on the Smash Master. Sorry, there was a follow-up question from Yuka. Um, how are the three to two and three to one collisions implemented in uh, considering stat stochastic rates? So in Smash, without stochastic rates, you just don't have three to two and three to one. Mm. However, what, what's done uh, uh, to maintain the detailed balance, let's say you have an omega decay to three primes, right? That would violate the detailed balance because you don't have the reverse reaction. But what we do is our omega is decaying into rho and pion, and then rho is decaying into pion and pion. So we have a chain of two to one decays, and then the detailed bal balance is maintained. Okay. Great. Uh, yeah, so what is Smash in terms of general transport code properties? It is solver of Boltzmann equation. It is BU type, if you include potentials. And the degrees of freedom are most of the established PDG hadrons. Masses go up to 2.5 GeV. There are strings which do not propagate. They just, um, they're just there for multi-particle production of hadrons. And there are also leptons and photons, 
which are completely decoupled. So you have some hadron flying, it can produce leptons and photons. Um, it is not by default, so you have to check on some switch for leptons and photons. And then these leptons and photons are just flying away. So they are not interfering with the rest of the evolution. Then um, propagation is happening from action to action. This is interesting because in many codes, uh, you have propagation by time steps because people care about potentials. Mm. In Smash, it's propagation from action to action. Then there is geometrical collision criterion, but there are also stochastic rates. Interactions are two to two and two to one collisions, decays, potentials, string formations, but I'm going to talk about interactions more. And again, it's a C++ code with all the modern infrastructure. What I want to mention here that it's important, um, smash initialization uh, can be done in different ways and you can simulate different systems. It's not only afterburner for the jetscape, you can simulate um, heavy ion collisions completely alone with smash and at low energies, it will make a lot of sense. At higher energies, um, let's say starting from 20 GeV, smash is probably going to give V2 smaller than it should have been. Uh, but otherwise, smash, smash is, is a decent way to just simulate heavy ion collisions from the very beginning to the very end. You can simulate a box, which is very useful for testing detailed balance, for testing equilibration, for computing transport coefficients. In particular, you can look at this paper. Uh, there is a way to initialize smash as a sphere. Um, and in this way, you can test expanding system. And we compared what Smash gives to the analytical solution of Boltzmann equation, you can look at this paper uh, and they nicely coincide. And the fourth mode is the actual afterburner that we are mostly going to be talking about. And these are all the degrees of freedom. In a way, it's advertising, just showing many degrees of freedom here. It's probably more than in any transport code, in, in any other transport code. And the nice part of this is that all the degrees of freedom, all the hadrons that can fly and smash are configurable via human readable files. So you don't have to dig into the code to add a new resonance. You can actually just add it uh, in the text file. Then I would like to stop